Hey everyone, I just wanted to share something that I thought was absolutely cool. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm a noob but at electronics and stuff, but um, I've actually charged this capacitor and discharged it, AC current. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the reason I think it's so fascinating is because I know how it works. Um, basically, uh, basically the way that it works, uh, this is a non-polarized capacitor. Um, the interesting thing about capacitors and AC current is that you cannot overcharge it. I'm charging it right now, but it's constantly charging and discharging as the, uh, the household wiring in the, in the house, um, it's always at 60 hertz here in the U.S. Um, and because of that, it's constantly charging and discharging 60 times a second. Um, I think it switches direction 60 times to, I think that's 120. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, as you can see, um, it hasn't blown up yet or anything like that. Uh, with a DC polarized um, with a DC polarized capacitor, it can uh, overcharge and explode, actually. But since it's constantly discharging, it's not overcharging. It's charging and discharging and charging and discharging. And because of that, it's not, it's not doing anything dangerous or anything. It's just simply charging and discharging. Um, shorting it out... Let's try this. That was actually a pretty good spark. It doesn't, uh, the longer you hold it, it won't increase the size of the spark. It's, uh, uh, like I said before and keep saying, it's constantly discharging. Uh, the size of the spark just basically means, uh, just basically indicates the part of the cycle it's in. I don't know if you can actually see it the spark or anything. I hope you can at least see it snapping. But, uh, or hear it snapping. I don't think it charged at all that time. It was right between where it starts charging in the cycle. Uh, it doesn't, yep. Ah, uh, it sparked that time. I don't know. I hope you can see that, but I can't, I don't know if you can or not. Um, so yeah, I can hold it for just a short time, for a very long time, it really doesn't matter, it, it constantly charges 60 times a second. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, I, um, like I said, I don't know if it's just because I'm new at this and stuff, or if it's, if other people think it's cool, but I just think it's really cool. Um... Um, there's a difference between, uh, true pa power and apparent power. I think apparent power is basically what you're charged for. Uh, that's resistance. You know, if you, if you have something that's producing heat, that is, I think that's apparent power. It's, uh, what you get charged for. Um, true power, though, uh, once again, I could have it backwards. True power... Uh, and true includes capacitance and inductance. They don't necessarily use up wattage or kilowatt hours or whatever, because most of the power that they produce or use does not get dissipated in the form of heat. It's in the form of something called capacitive reactants, or if you have a coil of wire like a motor or a heater or something, it's actually called inductive reactants. Uh, that's complicated in itself, ask me if you want. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm just amazed by this stuff, all this, you know, and stuff, but yeah, it's, I think it's just amazing for some reason. Yeah, I don't think you can see that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, maybe I can actually get closer and maybe, possibly, you can see it a little bit better.
No, that was at the bottom of the cycle. It did discharge, believe it or not, but it was a very small bit. Once again, very small. Um, no. Anyways, um, yeah, it's just getting really small ones. Um, anyways, I guess, I hope you did enjoy this. Uh, this is only a 2 microfarad capacitor, which is just one of the reasons that it's uh, such small sparks. Um, it doesn't charge quite as much as if it was like 47 microfarads or 500 microfarads or whatever. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, so yeah, it's getting kind of long. I should probably end the video. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good one. See ya.